One of the most difficult creative choices we face daily is what to pay attention to, what to lend our focus to, what to focus on. I mean, think about it. There's a billion and one signals competing for our attention. Social media alone is a constant onslaught, an assault against our fragmenting, increasingly fragmenting consciousness. It's kind of like if you don't have ADD today, you're not paying attention. And yet we are all aware that the more, the most deeply significant experiences are the ones that are all absorbing, that multitasking is actually a myth, that all you're ever really doing in those situations is switching rapidly between tasks and failing to get rich, immersive experiences, which are a prerequisite for any interpersonal transformation, education, or persuasion to take place. And so I think our response to that, right, the paralysis of choice, what the hell do I look at? Where do I place my attention. I mean, the dizziness, the vertigo of freedom, what to choose to focus on is a daily choice we make. But again, we have these instruments that focus us. One of the ways we do that is through architecture. You can design a sunken living room where people are facing each other, forcing each other to engage with one another in a deeply meaningful way. Architects have shown, cognitive cognitive architects have shown that a sunken living room in which everybody's facing each other will focus and fundamentally change the kind of subjective experience that unfolds. Another way that we focus our attention is with the movie theater or the screening room. This is a space that is designed. The chairs, the furniture, everything there has been architected to focus on the screen. And then whatever unfolds before the eyes will be, will be consumed, will be assimilated, right? Um, the camera The lens focuses. It's not just about what it shows, but it's about what it doesn't show. And what doesn't get shown gets pushed out of awareness, bringing focus into the lens, into the screen, into the now, into the forever box. This idea of framing the meaningful in order to focus our attention is a huge thing. So again, for me, my interest in music, my interest in particular landscapes, my interest in the lens, my interest in the movie theater, my interest in the sunken living room has to do with a desire to have some kind of stewardship over the contents of consciousness, right? To employ tools that will nudge me towards paying attention to specific things will, ah, uh, save me from the stress of a fragmented consciousness that's being assaulted and in an onslaught from every different direction. The, the, the uh, anxiety of distraction is a very real thing. And the meaningfulness and texture of deeply immersive experiences is another very real thing as well. One, I think, we grow from and learn from and enriches our lives. Deeply immersive experiences, right? slow and subdued, textured, focused experiences of consciousness, whether it's listening to the strum of a Spanish guitar or a beautiful opera song or staring at a sunset or feeling this moment, staring at the iris of your lover's eye or gazing upon the universe with your full, unvarnished attention as you mainline space and time through the optic nerve. When I get lost in a film, when I get sucked into a melody, when it moves me to tears, when it makes me cry, I I experience disjointment, I experience catharsis, I experience opiated adjacency. And I think one of the crises of our age is a crisis of attention. We don't realize we are not built to multitask, we are not built to have this fragmented consciousness switching rapidly between tasks. That is not where we become enriched. These are not the kinds of experiences that fulfill us so that we can <laughs> spill over and exceed ourselves. And I think a lot of the stress, a lot of the anxiety of our age is literally a side effect of misappropriated attention faculties. And man, if we again could better pattern our lives and better orient our attention on a day-to-day basis, mental health issues, the epidemic of anxiety, depression, and stress that exists today could be thwarted, could be remedied. We could move into spaces of mind beyond wellness, north of happy, the space of the archetype, the space of the surreal, the space of dream and awe and mystery and wonder. 
and I'm speaking from the heart. I'm speaking from direct experience. I'm speaking because the juxtaposition of those two modes of awareness, a fragmented, frazzled, unresourceful mental state, ah, or blissed out, staring at the clouds, marveling at it all. Very different modalities of paying attention and focusing and taking in the world. So, <coughs> I guess this is a call to uh, be discerning in where you place your body mind. Be discerning in what you pay attention to. Be discerning in how you pre-configure and pattern your physical environment and your life. We should all do that together. <laughs>